Hi, yes, yeah, Shaki here with the LGFA, and we're on another uh, call today with some key figures ahead of more brilliant club championship action at the weekend. And I'm delighted to be joined, and I'll go from the top left hand side of my screen, Desi Smith from Crusher Law. Did I do okay there? You did good. You did good. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. Yeah. I'm from Tip, as we were saying off air, <laughs> Desi, so I had to get the pronunciation right. Dennis uh, Desmond from Ratmore in County Kerry. Uh, is on the bottom left, uh, dad of Ashlyn, well-known Kerry star. And I have Aoife Lennon from uh, Armagh Harps in, of course, the county of Armagh. Folks, how are we doing? Good, good, good. Good, all is good in your world. Uh, Desi, I'm going to kick off with you as Cavan champions. Off you go on Sunday into uh, the Ulster Championship. Um, not going to be simple by any means. You're up against Carrick Moore, fresh from dethroning uh, at her, uh, St. McCartney's for six in a row. So uh, when you have such a short turnaround here, Desi, what kind of opportunity does it give you as a member of a backroom team to have a look at the opposition or are you just going game to game and, and just relying on your own strengths? Yeah, I think that's what you have to do. You have to rely on your own strengths. I think if you start to focus, because it's such a, sh a short period there, you have to go into it. Because even ourselves, we're, we're two weeks um, from our own county final. So we had to give the girls a little bit of a break um, as well. So then I know we can we can look at the the, the county final streaming as well, but there's very little you can do. There's no point in saying different. We focus on our own strengths. Um, we know what we're about and just give it a go. Really, that's all we, we can do at this stage. Um, maybe in, in, in other games you could, but no, no, no. I think you have to just focus on ourselves and um, push on. You played, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Des, you, you've played your own opposition previously in the Ulster Club, haven't you? Uh -huh, yes, we have, and we got a we got a very strong baptism. That that, that was our first year. That's uh, right. I'm nearly afraid to talk about it because we were yeah. we were left with our with our pants that day. We, we we it was just a, a complete and utter slaughter at that stage, you know. But anyway, we learn, we move on, and we were very very young at that stage, and we were with our first it was kind of our first year in senior championship. It was our we were two years as a club. Um, so it was a good experience and um, hopefully now we've learned a little bit more that team 99% of that team is still there and we're, we're hopefully make a, a better um, appearance this Sunday. Good stuff. We wish you well. Desi, I'll go down to Dennis and in, in, in Kerry and Ratmore. Dennis, familiar opposition for you guys as well in, in, in the final. It's a repeat mm -hmm. of last year's one against Southern Gales. So you know plenty about each other, Dennis. Yes, we, um, we've played in my spas in the championship this year, we played them um, down in Valencia and they beat us by a point. Um, we played them in the league as well, but when you play in the league, you play with all the county players. You know? So it's a different kind of a, a, different kind of a game. Um, yeah, we know plenty, and they know plenty about us as well, you know. So really, you, you're going out to do your very best on the day. You know, being a final, you know, there's only going to be one winner and you want to be there if you can, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Wish you well, Dennis. Um, I think uh, talking to Paul Murphy, the PRO down in Kerry, uh, the sponsors, Randall's brothers in Tralee and Killarney, celebrating a hundred years in business. So that's uh, it's it's a nice centenary for them as well. There's a double header there next Sunday, um, Dennis. So senior and junior A, and lovely to play in Fitzgerald Stadium, a venue befitting of of such a big game like this. It is. It's fantastic to to get one of the best to get the best venue in Kerry. I would say, you know. And for spectators as well, you know, it's really there's a fine stand there, you know. The day is fine, there's a fine tennis there. You know, the field, it's a big field, so, you know, it takes, uh, it takes, there's plenty of space there. <laughs> uh, Dennis, what was it like to win it last year? Particularly in a time when obviously, you know, we were without spectators and that. And... It was fantastic for, for the first time. Yeah. Being seen her, you know, and... Um, it was a fantastic, um, how would you say, um, day and, and for the club and, and for everyone involved that had been involved for the last number of years in building up underage and, and keeping it and keeping it going, you know, you know, the other people that are really uh, behind all of this, you know. So um, it was it was a big day. It was a big day. It was it was it was um i was difficult in a way you know spectators weren't there you know yeah. or they were showing it on they were showing it on this on on uh, on screen or whatever you know they were showing it live to the county you, you pay a five or something for it and it was good for you watching that you know so it was it was good for the girls to get there to get that first one you know and 
it worked out all right on the day, you know. But um, since then, like, we've lost three to immigration. Okay. There's two gone to Australia, two nurses, and there's a physiotherapist on to, um, on to Scotland. And we picked up two bad injuries against Finnwood Sensen's there in the last two weeks. We have a crucial ligament, fracture wrist, and crack ribs. So we have three, you know, it's... It's, um, Which players were they, Dennis? Caroline Green, um, I did her crochet. Um, Emily Raven, she's hard handed, and it's, in, it's, in a, it's, in a, it's not in the cast yet, but it's the swelling has to come down. And um, Katie Mahoney had crack ribs. So okay. then three players, like, you know, and then of course, Noreen Murphy hasn't played much this year. You know, injury has been has been at her. And as I'm speaking now about Noreen Murphy, um, I'd like on behalf of the team and that more LGFA to pass on condolences to them. Okay. Their, their father passed away yesterday. Okay, we're very so, sorry to hear that, Dennis. Yes, so um, Noreen and Irene have been very much part of the, <clears throat> of the team with many years, you know, and... Uh, they were up training with his Tuesday night. He died. He died on Wednesday. So okay. I just like to pass on the condolences to them. You know, so. Absolutely. Our yesterday, Gravan, and and we, we echo those sentiments here, um, Dennis. And please pass on our best wishes and, and condolences to to the family. Um, and you're very good to take the call today in, in, in against that backdrop, Dennis. We really, really appreciate it. Um, Aoife, how are you? How's everybody in Armagh Harps? I mean, you waited so long to win a county title. Last year, not content with that, you decided you'll go and win another one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think whenever it was 23 years, um, mm. since the last one, and you know, especially with lockdown, um, you're doing a lot of training on your own, not as a team. And when you come together, then the buzz was there. And, but to go again and win it this year is just extra special, like it just means so much. And um, we got such a high from last year, but. It's nice this year to actually sit back and then see that, you know, it's just not a one hit wonder and that all the hard work and it may have took 22 years, but it's it's a process and you have to keep sticking to the plan and trust the process. And that's what we've done. We've always just believed in ourselves and believed in the management. And it goes to show that when you keep going and keep believing that it, it is it happens. So, yeah, it, it's actually special. So we're really looking forward now to, to the next stage because you know, when you win a championship, you know what lies ahead. So it, it's, and especially with last year with COVID, we didn't really get the, the long shot in Ulster. COVID, they only had a week to prepare. So That's right. we've had more time now. We're prepared. We've enjoyed the celebrations. I think it's important that you acknowledge what we have achieved. Um, so we haven't had a week to enjoy that. So it's back to the drawing board now. I'm looking forward to the opportunity and the task ahead. You can only take it one game at a time. Uh, at a time as the old saying goes Aoife and as I'm sure you're you're acutely aware of um you're you're up against money glass from Antrim you know they're dangerous opposition um but when you look across the Ulster landscape and one for you as well Desi you know McCartans are gone you know Dunamine needed extra time in the Monaghan final perhaps things are starting to close in a little where there's a, a, a leveling of standards and you know it could be it could be there for someone to come out of the come out of the pack and win the Ulster title this year? Yeah, absolutely. Like you said, you can only play what's in front of you and you can only take on the challenge and what lies ahead. So obviously our focus is definitely just on the quarterfinal, but you can't lose sight that there's an opportunity and doors are opening. So we, we'll just take what we can to the Sunday and do our best. And I think that's all you can do is show up, do your best and do yourself and the Jersey pride and everything else takes care of that. But um, yeah, so I think the most important thing is to just play with our heart on Sunday and, and see where it takes us. But it's interesting to see what's going on outside of all of this too. Absolutely. Desi, have you been keeping an eye on, on the rest of the province or are you just keeping an eye on what's, <laughs> what's coming in front of your two it's eyes? Hard, yeah, it's hard not to keep an, an eye on what's coming ahead on Sunday. But yeah, I think the landscape is changing really. And I think um, maybe the standards have improved and the rest of us are just kind of catching up with everybody else. And, 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 and that's a good thing. Um, and it brings for a more um, exciting championship and it brings more eyes on to us and it brings 
the level and the participation and supporters and everybody gets involved and it's not just a one horse or a two horse race anymore everybody has a chance which is a great thing and it can only be good for for ladies football um because i say over the last years you're probably looking one or two of the the the, the big the big uh teams to, to progress out of us but now it can, it's really as you say it can be anybody's mm. if, if if luck goes your way uh, any famous well wishers this time, Desi? I saw a little video. <laughs> I saw a little video of yourself and Niall Quinn and the Boar's Head there from a few years back. <laughs> uh, there was a lot. Of, there was a lot of drinking that involved as well. So I, I, I <laughs> that was our very first senior ti- senior That's title. Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, in fairness, he was very good. He was very good, and and um, he let me take it about three times because every time I went up, I stumbled or I mumbled or I stumbled or mumbled anyway. But he was, he was really nice. He was good. And and of course, here we up in the boar head there with the with the massive cavern. Absolutely, yeah, good, yeah. very good, good fella. Um, Dennis, obviously, you've got Ashton, um, a stalwart of, of club and county for, for many years. What I hope you don't mind me asking, what it's like to, to be involved with a team when, when your daughter is playing? What's the, what's the dynamic there? Do you chat about it at the dinner table or do you do, put football to one side when you both arrive home? She'd be the biggest critic, anyway, <laughs> but. I have another daughter as well, Katrina, Katrina yes. Cross, you know, but yeah. um, um, they can be tough, they can be tough, they, well, I was, they've been critical and, you know, um, they will tell you and, and, and they let you know, and I'd be the same, I let them know as well, they're not, you know, but they've been, they've been very good now in all fairness, they're, they put in a good effort, I'm always put in a good effort, off the field, on the field, and preparation for games, you know, like all the girls do, you know, which is which is fantastic, you know. And it's been fantastic. Last year with my first year getting involved yeah. and and, uh, and um, it's been fantastic be training them, being involved with them and you know, you learn so much from them as well, you know. Um they go out in the field, they play their own game, you know, they're just they they, they lead by example, every one of them, you know. But um as you say it is good Ashton is a good um She's a good um, person on the team. She, you know, everyone helps each other out. You know. So. Uh, Dennis, was the, did you see this as a, a long term project when you first came in, or was it the case that look, I'll go in for the first year, and then maybe when you won the county but didn't get the chance to maybe go a bit further, that you said, look, well, I want to come back and see can we can we progress again? Well, I had been involved uh, on back the years. I was involved with this, with with that more seniors uh, in the main. Yeah. But, um, I retired, I retired in 2019 and so I had a lot of free time. So th- that was one of the main, I suppose, things being involved. I was getting involved with when you had two daughters involved. You would have to think, you'd have to, you'd have to think a lot about it, you know. Yeah. But um, being retired made it easy, you know. You have a lot more time to for the training and you don't have to be rushing or finishing your dinner, or, you know, or, Going to matches or whatever, you know, or going to challenge games or whatever. So being retired made it made it easier. And between a bit of golf and, and the football, I can tell you your time is is well taken up, you know. So how is the golf at the moment, Dennis? We keep talking about the football anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said. <laughs> we might tip over to Aoife so on that note. Um Aoife, obviously Paula put us in in, in touch which which are good stuff. Um Paula Enright, and she was telling me, uh, obviously, look, we're well aware of your capabilities as uh, as a footballer, but you're a personal development uh, life coach. Is that correct? And also an ambassador for Darkness Into Light, which is a magnificent um, initiative. And as Paula said, uh, you're a former uh, international soccer player as well. So a lady with many strings to her bow is, is how Paula described you, Aoife. Yeah, um, absolutely. Just this year, I qualified as a life coach, and um, I've been an ambassador for Darkness in the Light this past three years. Um, sadly, losing my dad to suicide when I was thirteen. So, you know, you when you're on that journey, it's um, it's a, I think it's very important that I'm at the stage now where I can give back and, and help other people go through their their own mental health and. Like sport plays a massive part in that and I think you know going on the journey led me to being interested in being a life coach and wanting to help other people and it, it certainly helped me a lot with my own game and um, 
being a life coach um, challenging beliefs and you know always wanting to grow and learn so yeah it's it's been exciting it's a new journey it's a new chapter so I'm looking forward to what lies ahead and definitely can see the impact of having a coach or the aspects of it both on and off the field and how it can help you in performance and in life. Is time management a big thing for you Aoife? To, to balance everything and, and to get that work-life balance that people refer to, particularly when you're a sports person as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I think COVID maybe shown that to us all that um, so many of us can be just chasing our tail and running from here to there. But we were all forced to slow down and ask, actually start to question what really matters and what we, you know how much valuable time is this. But it's important for me to be organised and prepare that when you when you're playing sports it's just not about turning up into the field and just putting on a pair of boots it, it's with the preparation it's the hard work and, and everything from your sleep your nutrition and um, to everything it takes time and effort so you need to ensure for me anyway that you're balanced in all areas you still have a life outside of football so you have to um, incorporate that you know you bring in that too so it's very important for me as a player to be to be balanced because I think if you're balanced before you enter the field, then the game and the football takes care of itself. Aoife, do you mind me asking how, when something so enormous happens in your life when you're such a young girl, how you managed to cope with that and, and how it shaped you in, in later years and obviously been involved in Darkness Into Light and, and the magnificent work that it does? Um, does it help to, to to carry the flame of your of your dad's memory, and is it a case of, of of to raise that awareness as well, and to help other people who may very sadly find themselves in a similar situation? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's made me who I am. You know, it's happened for me. Not probably when I was thirteen, I had no idea what mental health was, depression was, anything like that. So, I suppose for me, growing up. I was lucky that I had sport to go to and I had that connection with it. But as time went on, I realized that, you know, I needed to start to deal with the trauma and the aspects of it. And by going on that journey and a lot of my journey was an external thing. Sport was keeping me going and um, all of these things. But it comes a time and place where you no longer can, can look outward that you start having to look inward. Um, and I think going through that and meeting the emotions of it and healing the, those parts of me and, and going through the grief allows me to see it from a different light and allows me to understand the journey and the process. And from that, I just think that's why it's happened. It's happened to give me a gift that I can hopefully help and share with others that no matter how dark the days are, that there's always light at the end of the tunnel. And you go through it in your own stages. It's took me 15 years, you know, to to get that stage where I'm able to maybe 10 years where I can talk about it and taking the step into darkness and the light. But you meet it day by day. It's not just the process of, you know, like my dad's proud of me and I know that. So all I can do is continue to shine the light for him and know that whatever he can get through, that I can help share that on to others and let them know that there is light within you and that there is light at the end of the tunnel and I just hope that anybody even that listens to this that you know that deep with like everything lies within you and deep within you you have the strength and the courage but you have to be gentle and easy with yourself it's not an it's not an easy thing to go through and it's not nice but there's a it's for me I always say it that it's happened for me and now I'm, I'm entering into a new stage in life we're so sorry that happened to you even but you carry you carry an incredible and powerful message and we we wish you so well with, with everything that you do desi just incredible stuff from Eve and, and the way she she carries herself it's just uh, remarkable absolutely and, and anyone that goes through something like that it's 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 phenomenal that they're you know able to talk about it because it's all about talking and it's all about sharing um and i think that what she said there just speaks volumes and I hope it speaks volumes to everybody else as well, because as I say, there's not a community um, in Ireland that has not seen tragedy uh, in that regard. And as I say, it's again, it's going back to that old message of please talk and please share. And I think that's what everybody's doing. The likes of Aoife, um, you know, bringing herself into darkness, into light and a uh, life coach. It's phenomenal, phenomenal. And, and 
you can't see any more than that absolutely absolutely dennis i mean as a dad and i'm, I'm a dad of, of three young boys um you know you worry about them all the time and you know the world they're grown up into and um you know how they'll turn out and how they'll cope and it's it's just so important i think that they can you can have that positive relationship you, you talk about your two daughters there and it's just so important that we talk to each other and we, we communicate and and that we make sure that if somebody's not okay that we can try and help in in some shape or form yeah definitely you know i, I find like you know that when we do meet at whatever you know at training and after training there's always a conversation um with the girls before and after and i find it as well it's a great it's a great way of just relaxing and just enjoying the more enjoying the day looking forward to the training you're doing the training and you just get involved in it you know and it's a great avenue as well for for the young for the young girls for the young ladies on the team that they're out and they have they have an objective they have they're playing a county final or playing a league final or a semi-final or whatever and they're aiming for this and they're putting in preparation and when they're putting in preparation they have to be um, disciplined in their life that they have an objective to achieve you know and i think that helps as well and it keeps it keeps them motivated it keeps their mind occupied they have their work their college or their you know, and the football, and the, you know, so all those things are like. But we do all help each other. You know, whether you're whether you're training or whether you know, everyone helps each other. Like I have two very good people with me there, Max and Jordan and Jen Ross. It's great. I would admit them previously. You know, being involved with them, whatever. You know, and um, I would. I would have a great conversation. We have a great um, sort of um, dialogue with them. You know. And you just, everyone has problems um, in their lives, which you've got to deal with them and, you know, and make the best of every day and enjoy the moment. Aoife, has sport been a big, oh, that's a very silly question to ask. Sport has obviously been such a big part of your life and, 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 and your coping mechanism and how you've evolved into the person that you are. I mean, when did you first um, become passionate about sport and, and enjoy sport? It probably takes no heed, but I have three brothers, so from a young age, I've always been in and around them. And then I was about five or six, and my dad took me to the harps. And then with my brothers playing soccer, I just got into the, the flow of soccer. He was always there. Our family's been always big into sport and football, so um, I just followed the path. And to be honest, it, it's I'm so blessed that it's been my path and it hasn't been something else and that I was able to go there, be, be surrounded by people that inspire you, challenge you and help you grow. And it, lucky for me, like when I went to the sport, um, that was when I knew it, you know, that I could talk to people, that I could go there and, and people would understand and help you through it. Um, I think it's a massive outlet to have somewhere to go to. You know, you meet your best friends or you have fun, you enjoy it. And sometimes it takes you completely out of your head that, you know, you're just playing in the moment. You don't think about anything else because the ball means so much, your, your teammates mean so much, and you're just surrounded by an environment. And But I also think that there's more to sport and it's important that you know, for me growing up, I, I might have thought that sport was my life and that I didn't have anything outside of it. But it's important to recognize that it's just part of your life. And, you know, you still have everything outside of that, but not to lose yourself in that sport is, is just all you've got because everybody's got their own journey, their own story. Um, but it's massive that you have it in your life because it helps you grow. And it, like Desi says, you have to have the discipline. You have to have that line of discipline where you say no to things, you sacrifice and you do that because you know what's what lies ahead. Like we have to do that because we want to win. We want to play well. You, you want you want to turn up as the best version of you for yourself, for your family and for your teammates. So I think it's very important that you see the elements of within sport and on the outside of it. Absolutely. Um, Desi, what are the next couple of days going to be like just getting 
fine tuning preparations. Will you have one more light session, or are you pretty much done? You probably have a get together maybe maybe tomorrow night, Friday night. Yeah, we'll be kicking about on um, on Friday with a bit, you know, a bit of tea, sandwiches, a bit of a chat, but nothing really that stressful at all. And then it's just, you know, relax. Really, it's all about relax. Take it easy and um, making sure you're um, ready for Sunday. I think that's when we're we're really looking forward to Sunday because it's a it's a home game for us and uh, yeah. it's it's a front of our families and it, it, I think this year it's it's great. You know, we can have our uh, people in, we can have our family friends in, and it's just a momentous occasion for everybody. And that's something we hadn't got last year. And so these things you have to cherish. Absolutely, absolutely, Dennis. Will you get a few holes of golf done before? Uh... Before the big day, <laughs> I might, I might maybe on Saturday evening, maybe I might go for uh, just to unwind a bit before the match, and we'll train tomorrow night. But not training really, just kick around really and have a chat and just relax and prepare for some day where we're going to be at, what time we're going to be there, and you know those kind of things. And um, as I say, you know, uh, just deal with everything that we can deal with, you know. And um, maybe then go for the golf on the Saturday, maybe Saturday, maybe if the weather is, I think the weather is pretty poor on Saturday, so we'll see how that goes, you know, so. Yeah, you, I mean, as you as you've mentioned previously in the conversation, Dennis, you're down a few bodies and, and you've had um, some, some sadness to, to, to deal with as well. It's. It, it, it puts everything into perspective and it's and it's going to be it's going to be a big challenge for you. It is. Um... Like as I say, the two girls, Eileen and Noe, and they have been fantastic ambassadors for that more down the years. Their brother Jerry would have played senior football for Kelly. Um, so it is really, and the family were very much involved in GA all down the years, all down the years from when the 10, 12, 14, 16. Jerry was on the Kelly minus for three years. Then the girls came along and you know, when football, ladies football went on a bit of a, it progressed every year. I mean, it has grown every year and, and, and I can see it around the county and in our, in our own club. Um, our, our B team are in the final on Sunday as well against Belly Mac. They're playing at 11 o'clock in Legion. Um, I mean, like, you know, it's fantastic that two teams from that more. Playing in um, in the C final and in the senior final, you know, so there's been a lot of been a lot of work done, and I mean, it's getting enough. A lot of people involved, um, and when you have when you have say a, a girl from one of the families, it brings the boyfriend, it brings the brothers, it brings the father and the mother of the sisters, it brings everybody out, and I'm sure there'll be a big crowd there on Sunday supporting um, supporting that more. Yeah, and sure. the, the same with South Kerry. South Kerry would have their support as well, you know. So, or Southern Gales, should I say. Southern Gales, yeah, it'll be a big day, lies in store, Dennis. We wish you well. Um, and Aoife, you, you'll have your, maybe, a, a, as you said, a, a light get together tomorrow evening, perhaps, will you? Yeah, we'll have a light um, get together. We're actually having a light get together tonight. So, okay. um, it'll be good to just, again, I think it's being around that environment, looking forward to the challenge ahead, seeing everybody having a bit of crack. Um, and, and stay in focus for what lies ahead on, on Sunday. So, wish you well. Um, life coaching doesn't extend to lowering uh, a, a golf handicap, does it, Aoife? Well, I can, I can definitely help with, a, <laughs> with it, but um, it's a process. But um, no, uh, <laughs> oh. it helps with everything. <laughs> oh, sorry about that, Dennis. We might be able to help you with some time management or something like that um, instead. I think I need more than a life coach. <laughs> what's that Dennis I think I need more than a life coach <laughs> <laughs> very good folks it's great to have you on um, Desi we wish you well and crush her off that okay yeah so even with the temporary accent it's not too bad actually okay that. okay I, I, I'll work on it I'll keep working on it um, Aoife Lennon we wish you so well and thank you for your your, your honesty and, and your uh, the message that you have is just an, an incredibly powerful one keep doing what you're doing we wish our Ma Harps well um, at the weekend we wish all clubs indeed playing uh, over the weekend the very best there's lots of county finals happening uh, and of course, Dennis Desmond in Ratmore against Southern Gales in the Kerry final. Folks, great to have you on. Enjoy the weekend as best you can. Uh, not always easy when you're in the thick of the battle, but uh, thanks so much for coming on today.
No problem. Thank you. Cheers. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah.